Hello, and welcome to the 17th Annual Food Justice Summit. My name is Enrique Orozco, and I am one of the co-organizers of the summit this year. Before we start your session, I want to highlight some of the accessibility options, engagement features, and explain how to access interpretation services. Hola, y bienvenido a la 17 Cumbre Anual de la Justicia Alimentaria de Chicago. Me llamo Enrique Orozco, y soy uno de los coordinadores de la cumbre este año. Antes de empezar, quiero tomar un momento para indicar las opciones de accesibilidad, las herramientas de participación y los servicios de interpretación. Para acceder a los servicios de interpretación, fíjase al lado izquierdo de su pantalla. Al hacer clic al botón que dice Audio Captions, se abrirá una ventana. Haga clic en Select. Y luego, elige el lenguaje de su preferencia, inglés o español. Comenzarás automáticamente a escuchar al intérprete. Para acceder a los servicios de subtítulo, elige el botón que indique CC. Se tiene que elegir una de estas opciones. Para escuchar a los presentadores, elige la opción Floor. Se puede cerrar esta ventana. Finalmente, Deberás silenciar el video principal para no escuchar a los presentadores e intérpretes. Estas opciones también se pueden encontrar al lado derecho de su pantalla, bajo la pestaña que dice Interpretación. To access interpretation services, look at the left side of your screen. By clicking on the Audio Captions button, you will open a window. Click on Select and then choose which language you would like to hear. English or Spanish. You will be automatically begin to hear the interpreter. To turn on closed captioning, click on the CC button. You will need to select one of these options. To hear the original speakers, select the floor option. You may close this window. Finally, you will need to mute the main video in order to not hear the original speakers and interpreters. These features can also be found on the right side of your screen under the interpretation tab. The platform also offers a number of visual accessibility tools. To find them, click on the profile image at the bottom of the screen and then select accessibility adjustments. You can also change the language of the window through this pop-up. Under these accessibility adjustments, you can select different options to make the website easier to read. We welcome you to participate in the conversation through the chat window. Clicking again on the chat tab on the right side will open up this screen. Select the box at the beginning to begin typing into the chat. At the end of the session, we will open for a brief question and answer portion, and you may type your questions here. Afterwards, I invite you to open the polling tab to answer a very short survey that lets our team know how well we did in planning these sessions. I hope you enjoy the 17th annual Chicago Food Justice Summit. I will now turn it over to your speakers. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nichols, and uh, we're getting a little bit um, organized over here uh, with it. I, I thank you for joining me for the one of the very first sessions of um, this annual Food Justice Summit. And my session today is Meet Them Where They Are, How Urban Farming Can Be Used in Unorthodox Ways uh, to connect with your community. And let me get all set up. Apollo for not having it full, and you have to see my entire design process, uh, a la Wizard of Oz. So I just want to let you know, while I'm in my, my share screen, I am not able to see questions right off the bat, uh, but we, we will um, pop back in. So you'll see me pop back in every every now and again. Uh, so, um, we so we grow present to meet them where they are, and we grow gardeners globally. 
I'm Natasha Nichols, uh, a grower of gardeners globally. I am a master urban farmer, a founder of a nonprofit, and the executive director of the nonprofit. I'm also the secretary, the receptionist, uh, the farm manager, <laughs> all of those things, because we are still finding our footing um, in, in the actual nonprofit world. But when it comes to community and making sure that uh, we are connected, we pretty much have that under control. And I'm very, very proud of the work that we have done since beginning our um, organization way back in 2016. It feels like decades ago after the last three years that we've had, and um, I'm better for it, and I'm, I'm happy about it. And I'm pretty sure that those of you who are in the ag world feel like you may have aged um, a, a decade or so in the last two years as well. If not, I need you to tell me your secrets. Okay, so let's chat, and I'm very honest, okay? We're going to try to cover these topics in uh, a way that fits within the hour and then also fits the slides that I made. Essentially, I make slides to keep me on track, but I love a good story and I love, love, love having interaction from our community. So I'll pop back and forth. Um, if it makes any of you uh, um, uncomfortable to see the popping back and forth, please let me know. I don't want to mess with anybody's um, um, issues. So we don't, we don't want anybody feeling sick like they're on a roller coaster for me popping back and forth. So we're going to talk about urban farming in Chicago, connecting with people everywhere, chilling out, okay? Um, online summits and online communities. Because remember, we are connecting with people in an unorthodox way and not just your regular run-of-the-mill um, agricultural ways where uh, through community gardening or um, things like uh, produce delivery or CSAs. There's nothing wrong with that. That is just not my ministry. And I realized that very early on that um, I often think of things in a very, very um, out of the box way. And everything makes sense in my head. And it makes sense when we get into practice. But when trying to communicate that with the people who are helping out, they say, really, really confused until things get into motion. Um, it's one of the things that my husband both loves and probably hates about me, but it all works out in the end and we all end up very, very large. Okay, Chicago is um, pretty, pretty large for urban ag spaces. Uh, we have more than 890 active spaces within our city limits, and that's according to the Chicago urban ag mapping project. So we're in good company with feeding our city. And when I first started We Sow, We Grow, um, I had the amazing idea that we were gonna create this very, very, very robust community garden in the West Pullman neighborhood of Chicago. And that everybody who moved on the block and lived in the neighborhood was gonna come and rent a growing space from us. We got about three months in, and every time we explained a uh, model that we were going after, people gave us uh, the blank stare and let us know that that wasn't what they wanted to do at all. Um, they were okay with purchasing from us and coming to learn from us. They did not want to work the land like, like we did. Uh, so we pivoted like we would learn to do over and over and over again over the years. Um, the idea started, my background is I am a content creator. Uh, most people call that influencer now. I hate the term. It is what it is. And uh, in 2010, I started my online site called House Full of Nichols. My last name is Nichols. I was pregnant with my twin. We were going to have a house full of children and we needed uh, document the things that we did, um, contacted by the Illinois Farm Bureau uh, for a program that they started called Illinois Farm Families. And this pro people within the city to farmers all over rural Illinois. And we formed a community called City 
the moms. And through that community, we were able to go and ask questions that most city folk don't get to ask rural farmers at all. Um, or so we thought, right? Because we actually can, the world is a very small space because of internet. Uh, and, and, and we decided that we were going to grow bigger. The problem was during that time, my husband and our four children lived in a condo uh, in East Garfield Park. It's 14 foot tall, tall ceilings, no backyard, no growing space. Or so I thought. It was before I realized the joys of container gardening, um, vertical gardening, indoor uh, gardening with with um, um, apparatus that that would help me do that. I wasn't so I became aware. I started doing uh, seeds, and we went to food festival where I was chicks in adulthood. Apology, my dog. Um, in adulthood, and I wasn't scared of them like I was in sixth grade when we eggs and they attacked me uh, during class. Um, so we went from having no knowledge of growing to kind of doing everything full blown. And in 2014, um, my husband and I built our home with Habitat for Humanity in West Pullman. And one thing that I noticed while building our were all the empty lots within our neighborhood. And it it really, really saddened me because we were coming from a place that, if we're gonna be honest, was starting to be gentrified and all beautiful things that we had been asking decades were starting to pop up. Grocery stores within the community, um, uh, a local greens, banks that we could walk to and and luxury. You know, all of it starting to pop up right as we were moving out. So it felt like we had put in a ton of work to only move in to another neighborhood uh, that was lacking the way Scarfield Park was when when I was growing up, because that's where where I was uh, raised. So um, one of the the things that I wanted to focus on in building my new house was a growing space, and we have a backyard, we have a garage. Um, our house doesn't go the length from the, the sidewalk to the alley like our condo did. Uh, so we lost home space, but we, we had a bunch of backyard space and the sky was the limit. So we get, got started and I planted my first in-ground garden in 2015 and you couldn't tell me anything. Uh, it was amazing. So amazing that we planted watermelon and I thought, that we were going to have all of this good watermelon to eat because I saw the ovule uh, pop out, didn't realize that they weren't being pollinated properly. So all of the mistakes that I made early on um, taught me a lot and gave me a good foundation to, to begin the We Sow, We Grow project. Unofficially, um, the, the We Sow, We Grow project was started in May 2016. And we decided that we were going to kind of go rogue. We did get permission from the alderman's chief of staff uh, to, to put raised beds on any of the lots that weren't being used at all. So we put eight, or started with four, four by four beds in the lot across our, our house. And um, I got a phone call in, in May from the producers of uh, the Harry Show from Harry Connick Jr. And they wanted to uh, acknowledge the work that I was doing within the community. I still don't know to this day how they found me because we weren't established at all. It was just an idea that I had and it was four small beds. Well, what turned into them coming to interview me uh, also became Harry Connick Jr. descending upon my house and babysitting my children all day while I went out. Uh, for a day on on him with my husband, he was he. My husband was with Harry Connick Jr. Don't worry, y'all. <laughs> and in that, they surprised us with lumber from a lumber uh, organization that we had been asking for donations from to build the community garden. They surprised us with our very first chickens and chicken coops that did what they were supposed to do at the time, but weren't. Uh, viable for an, an urban farm or 
community. Um, and then bunches and bunches of seed starts seeds. It was beautiful. It was a great start for that. It wasn't enough. So we took the idea and we grew. What does that have to do with being unorthodox, though? Um, I always like to, as urban growers, we have a unique position. Most of us are community members. We live within the communities that we grow in, or at least I'm hoping. Kind of one of the greatest acts of rebellion that you can have, because the world tells you that that you need to rely on resources and you don't always have to. And I will always say, I don't have anything against grocery stores. They're needed, they're necessary. Um, but, you know, being able to choose what you grow and how you grow it and where you grow it. Uh, and the fact that you can go out to your backyard or to whatever container you're growing in to get your stuff for dinner or lunch or breakfast is kind of a, a revolutionary act these days. And uh, whether we want to or not, we, we become activists uh, because that's the way that the world has, has set us up. And um, before I knew it, we were uh, building community uh, while we set up the, the farm over here. And one of the, the stories that we share often is the fact that we were, um sorry we're homeschooling here we were we were starting our we were starting our uh farm and we were building out the chicken coop and we were building out the beds and everybody who had been living here for some time kept telling us that it wasn't going to work and that's one of the things that you never ever want to hear within the community um and it's it, it was already uh slightly tense for us because the community members didn't know us as other community members. We live literally right across the street from our farm. We can look out of our bedroom window and see it. So there's a, 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 a state of distrust that, that community members have, especially within the black community, when you see stuff popping up that you've had no input on. And, and one of my greatest concerns that I told my husband was, I don't want people to think that I'm coming into their space and trying to change it uh, uh, to, to fit my needs and, 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 and my uh, desire for aesthetic value. Um, it feels very, very unwelcoming when you live within a neighborhood or a space and new people come in and try to change everything that you love about it. Uh, it puts me in the mind of uh, the folks in D.C., who wanted to move into neighborhoods and then complain about go-go music playing. I mean, it's a culture. Go-go music is, is, is a culture. And, you know, or, or how Howard University, um, people who moved around there were walking dogs and then complaining about the students walking on the campus <laughs> and saying if they didn't, it, you know, they didn't want dogs running over them while they were studying or out um, um, hanging out with friends, they should move the college. Like the unmitigated goal that people have when they move some uh, someplace and then want to change it uh, to fit their needs. It's something, it was a, a coat that I didn't want to wear. <clears throat> so I wanted to make sure that I was doing the work that I would want done um, and, and how I would want it done if other people moved into to my community. Now I've been here for almost a decade and uh, I am kind of selfish with, with things and I want better uh, for our community. And I realize that when a group of people go for too long without being listened to or paid attention to or respected, um, it sets up apathy and it is, we're not gonna say anything because nobody will listen anyway. So this five, two you know, person was coming in all rah-rah, let's grow our food and let's do stuff this way uh, because food is a revolution. And people looked at me like I was crazy, rightly so, rightly so. Um, and, and when I decided uh, that I had to change the way that I was approaching everyone uh, to respect everyone, 
things changed. Imagine that. So this is how we do things in our neck of the woods. Um, um, we grow gardeners globally, and that's not just a, a snazzy tagline that, that we have. We literally service everyone around the world. And that's the way that I connect with, with community in West Pullman and, and everywhere else. So our roots spread far and wide. So um, if I can use the pokeweed or milkweed, even for that matter, uh, you know how if it gets set, you can't pull it out. That's the way that we want our organization to be. We, we want to be um, a resource and, and uh, rooted so well that nothing will will knock us down. Um, but we also don't want to be aggressive like mint. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do really, really bad jokes and laugh at them, even if nobody else does. So we have zone ambassadors um, and ambassadors around the country to make sure that we are teaching according to uh, the seasons and um, the, the growing uh, uh, environment. We don't want to apply zone six and 5A and 5B rules to zone 10. We just can't do it. So we try to make sure that we are creating space for everybody to be here. We host online summits. Uh, we launched the We So We Grow Summit in 2020, and we have not looked back since. Um, it is a, uh, gosh, it, it was work, um, but I would never trade it. And, and I share often with the summit attendees that uh, around a week or two before the summit starts, I always want to refund everybody's money um, because I don't think that that we can do justice to the way that the community shows up for us. We all have, always have a really good time. And I end up meeting new people all over the world and the city of Chicago who I never would have met in, in any other form. Um, In-person networking is great, but you don't have a chance to, to be able to focus on one person or one session all at once while also communicating kind of like what we're doing right now. It's amazing. And, you know, um, the summit allowed us to do that. And it allowed also people to show their expertise in areas that I'm not an expert in. So we connected folks everywhere. And then we think outside of the box. So everything doesn't have to be food related for us. If that's what you do, then, then that's what you do. And I always want to um, push that you do what works for you and, and do what works for your community, do what works for your mental health, do what works for your pocket and your budget. If you, know, you can't do CSA boxes or you can't um, um, host uh, uh, people in the space because you don't have a building to host in and do what works for you and make it work that way. It'll, it'll happen the way that you need it to and that uh, will, will come to pass. So last uh, Christmas or the holiday season, we formed a group called the West Pullman Holiday Elves and we decorated um, porches and doors for our community members. And it was a way to connect them with the mission of We Sell, We Grow and to brighten up our neighborhood a little bit uh, after the last two horrific years that we've had. So I know when people see that we are located in Chicago, they wonder why we don't just stay in Chicago. Okay. Um, and and, and uh, if you you know me, you know that I rep Chicago hard. I'm a Chicagoan until Chicago ends. Uh, I love my city. I love um, how fantastic it is, but I also hate the fact that we uh, don't reach out more when it, when it comes to connecting um, through food. And if we do, and if you do, that's great. I don't feel like we reach out as much as we could. Uh, and I also feel like people in other spaces deserve to be able to learn how to grow their own food. So how do we connect and feel intimate? This way, we're on the internet, right? We are uh, here 
And while we are not in the space with each other, we are still very much connected. And I keep telling people that the internet is not a horrible tool, it's just used horribly because people can hide behind a screen and say things that they would probably never ever say uh, to people's faces. And that's on them, not you. Um, if you want to use the internet effectively, you can, and that's how we do it. So we use various platforms, even the ones that make you try to pay to be seen by people or make you dance to music so that you can show up in algorithms. We use it and we use it for what we need to use it for. And we connect with the people that we're supposed to connect with. Out of uh, those one and three, roughly 15% will give up after the first season of growing because they don't understand how things work. Um, and, you know, there's nobody to help them. And, and oftentimes, if you go into a big box store, um, the folks don't know uh, gardening or growing aspects. They, they know where to find the stuff. They just don't know how to use it properly. And that's that's what we teach. And it's... You would think that it would be unorthodox, um, um, wouldn't be unorthodox to teach. But when I realized that a lot of the urban ag spaces are only kind of connecting the food and giving the food or selling the food or donating the food, there, there are community aspects where you can come in and you can take classes, but that's not their focus. That's not their front focus. And our front focus has always been education first with the food coming afterwards. It's not making us rich, but it's making us happy. We also do a very non-biased approach to teaching all aspects of growing. Yep, we talk about GMOs and the confusing labeling that takes place when purchasing seed and plant starts because no seed seller can sell GMO seed to home growers. And most people don't know that because labeling always says non-GMO. And it's not an argument, like we don't, we don't get into our arguments at all. Uh, it's just something that makes me very sad because people will often buy beyond their means because they think that they're getting uh, a superior, you know, product because it has non GMO on it, instead of just being told the truth right off the bat. We talk about pesticides and how even with uh, organic growing, they're in grocery stores, at least, um, there's still some level of pest control that is used. Uh, organic um, is also a, a level of, of growing that you have to qualify for and certify for. So, you know, uh, if you're a home grower, you know, most people don't have certification, they don't have the money. But if you're not using anything, then of course your stuff is, is organic. Like we, we teach these things and the, and the brass tacks of growing. And we also admit when we don't know things. It's hard to do, but it also makes us uh, more reliable and trustworthy. And I think in a world where you don't know if everybody is telling the truth, it's nice to hear someone say that they don't know something. And when you see people doing trendy things or viral things to uh, plants, it makes you groan a little bit inside. Uh, one of the, the greatest um, uh, examples actually came yesterday. We were telling people in zones six and up that it's time to start seats if they're, if they're starting indoors and not buying the seed starts. And someone came and challenged and kept going. And the discussion uh, was was a bit terse for for a while. And then he realized that I wasn't a cannabis account. <laughs> but he still hurled an insult at me at the at the end. I thought this was a weed account. Um, and, and you know then told me my video was still horrible. I thought it was great. But everybody's a critic. But we do admit when we don't know things and we, we seek education from experts uh, who can help us out with that. We also believe that the children are our future. Uh, if you were born probably after 2000, you may not know the reference um, for that line. And I weep a little bit 
Um, but we have children led um, uh, events. And during our summit, we actually had two sessions that were led by children. One of them being my daughter, who is the snaggletooth uh, young lady up top and uh, the daughter of another one of our community members. Um, my daughter led a session on winter seed sowing and why it's important for people in cold climates um, and or why it's especially important for people in cold climates and then how people in warmer climates could use their winter uh, to help them start seeds as well. And then the young lady on the bottom is one of our community members' daughters. And she talked about mental health when it comes to uh, growing food outdoors and taking care of your houseplants. And it was just nice to, to see kids um, being able to teach from a space and a place of knowledge uh, because they were watching what their their parents do. I do call my youngest daughter the mini farmer around here. You'll see her pop up on our socials because um, she's out there when I am. Uh, her twin brother, who's right next to her, uh, likes to eat what we grow, but he's also knowledgeable of, of things that are going on and he's our chicken whisperer. So our hens listen to him and follow him around. So we use what we have to get what we need. Um, and we take a Montessori approach, not just with the children. We make sure that our community members are learning things that they're interested in and, and curious about. We still do a structured um, curriculum of sorts. Uh, so we take you from seed to table. So we, we talk about processing the food that you grow, um, cooking it other ways to cook things that aren't uh, the same old, same old, you know, for, for people. And we, we want you to be able to use up every single product that you have. And if the leaves can be eaten, you know, a lot of people were throwing away their beet leaves um, and, and, you know, not, not consuming those or pulling up weeds and not using them for the medicinal qualities that they have. It's just one of those things that when you see that, that knowledge come through or that knowledge uh, be applied, it's a wonderful thing to, to witness. And we also encourage kids to show up in virtual meetings and your dogs and cats um, and spouses. Um, we realize that we don't have to be so formulated with the things that we do. Um, and we also have to understand that life happens and we are in a weird space uh, these days. And it is essential to meet people uh, in ways that they can be met. Our, our, our um, sessions are always recorded. So if you can't be with us in real time, or you have to go, you can always come back and see. Now we do have, um, look at David. Uh, our online summit changed our game. Sorry about that. Uh, we do have um, spaces that uh, are for uh, more focused growers and a community um, that, that reflects that. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So, um, I'm going back to our online summit and how it changed our game. It was because that put us on the map for being able to connect with, with people from all over the world. Uh, and in that we have 25 states and two countries were, were represented in our last summit, which took place in October of 2021. And then in 2020, our first summit, um, we had maybe 20 states and three countries represented. Japan was in there as well. Um, and our presenters reflected the, the diversity of the growing space and our um, community in general. Um, people come where they see themselves reflected and, and kids are the same way. If kids don't see other children in spaces, they don't wanna be there. And they're very well aware when a, a space is not kid friendly. Uh, toddlers may be aware of it, they don't care. Uh, toddlers do what they want, but, but kids who are learning and in that space where they're aware of, of um, their bodies moving through the space, they want to see other children there. And that's why it's very, very important for us to show children um, in our socials and allow them to teach courses too. And then here comes that corny uh, pun again. We extended the roots of our network. Um, the folks we would never ever be able to reach in person, we reach online and we have an active community where if I'm not able to answer any questions, one of our zone ambassadors can, or one of our home growers who's been growing for 45 years 
um, can take a stab at it. And, and then we come back and have a discussion. Uh, I don't allow the piling on of, of um, opinions when, when there's nothing wrong with the way someone is growing or how they're growing. It is, can, it, it can be very ostracizing and no one wants to be in a community that doesn't foster uh, respect and care. And, and everybody who is in the We So We Grow community, I want them to feel as if they're part of our family. We want them to feel like uh, we are, gosh, I'm doing fast and furious now. We're family. And, and that they can come and ask any questions and not be laughed at. We don't want any of that. We don't want anybody um, to feel like their knowledge is, is horrible because they're coming from um, the space of a new grower. We were all new growers at once. And if we remember that and keep that at the forefront of our mind, we tend to stay a lot more humble and reach a lot more people. Where are these online communities? Am I hiding them from you? I am not. Um, as I stated, a lot of them uh, are spaces that are free to access, uh, like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. You do need to learn uh, SEO or the proper keywords to use. Um, in those spaces, specifically Instagram, they want to make sure that you are using the proper hashtags. But you also have to change with the times. And that includes doing reels or, you know, Instagram lives or Facebook lives. They want video on a platform that was originally started to share photos. But I digress. Um, and one of the things that I, I stand behind is I'm not dancing. I'm too old to, to be learning all of these new dances and my back hurts. So I do what I do and that's stay funny um, to me anyway and share information. And we do it in a way uh, that people won't feel as if HD is talking to them. And it's it's great if I did have a PhD in, in something that was urban ag focused or agriculturally focused. But when you start losing people because you're speaking above their heads, you've missed the entire point and the community will not thrive. We also have places that if you are um, looking to build community and, and start a, uh, um, an account to, to purchase your own space for community to gather, you can start paid communities on places like Mighty Networks or uh, Patreon. And whether or not you want to make them paid or or not that's your prerogative but those are also spaces to gather that don't have so much clutter like facebook instagram and twitter do um and i want you to use it wisely and be nice uh, i don't i don't know if i can stress that enough that niceness goes a long way while also still being firm um and i say that because okay how do i break this there are a lot of times where people come into traditionally uh, black spaces or um, um, spaces of color or, or queer spaces or child spaces, and they think that they are going to save the space. And we have had to nicely uh, check some egos at the door of our farm to let them know that the work that we're doing is still going to be done after they leave. And either they can join our community as a whole, or they can stay out there. And it's it's not there's no love lost at all. But we don't need we don't need people coming in um, and being heroes and then leaving. You're not you're not making uh, the proper impact. Uh, now, someone, however, wanted to be a hero and gift us with a billion dollars. I could make some concessions with that. Um, I'd have to see where the billion dollars is coming from, but you know. We, we would make some concessions, possibly. <laughs> uh, and connecting in person. You want to use what you have to get what you need. And I've been able to do this with a lot of organizations here that are Illinois-based and through connections that I made with um, people that I met through work. So remember I was talking about the online uh, site that I started called Houseful of Nichols, which is still running, and it's, it's Houseful and Associates. Uh, but I've gotten to meet um, people from um, organizations such as Random Acts of Kindness, which is run by an Acme Collins, who was on Supernatural. 
Um, and Amy Poehler Smart Girls has featured me and the work that uh, we so we grow does on two different occasions. We've connected with dairy farmers and kid farmers and cranberry farmers to kind of extend the knowledge um, outside of just what grows in your, your own backyard or in your own back porch. Uh, because we we still are very much connected to to um, conventional farmers and the and the work that they do and the work that they do is hard. We we have to acknowledge that um, it may not be the way that a lot of us work or like to work or want to work, but they still work. Um, I've been on podcasts. Uh, that's another unconventional and unorthodox way to connect with people. And we're not talking. We are you know. Uh, uh, um, or, or any of those straight works. We're talking people on the ground who are wanting to expose more people to the growing space, grounded by the farm, barnyard language. I've been on a couple of podcasts that I probably will never go on again, but the people who needed to hear me were able to hear me and that's that. Um, I've also partnered with pretty amazing people um, who I would have never met if I weren't already on these, uh, spaces on the internet like Twitter. Um, and and those people include uh, Genevieve and, and Jared Padalecki uh, from Supernatural and Walker. Uh, and we have Akadiete and Adewan, who was um, the original Broadway cast of Hamilton and on Station 19. And then we've connected with uh, Illinois communities through Peggy Notabart Nature Museum and Morton Arboretum. It's it's what I, I'm a talker. I'm a connector until I'm not anymore. Until I'm I'm exhausted, and 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 that's what makes our organization unique and special. And I know unorthodox is is kind of clickbaity. So I got you here to hang out with me. I apologize, <laughs> but we got to do, you know, things in a way where where we we meet people and then pull them into us instead of um doing like I did the first couple of years and crying that I built it and people didn't come. I had to go and, and meet the people where they were and then show them that as a community member, uh, I believed in the space that that I was growing. And you can find us uh, email at info at we so we grow work on our website at we so we grow dot org. Um, I broke it, so we're we're fixing it. I have a meeting with our web designer to to fix it today. Instagram at we so we grow and Twitter Twitter at we so we grow. We also run our community on Facebook called the We So We Grow Gardening Chat and Mighty Networks, um, which is uh, uh, opening up pretty soon. So if you want to join, um, we'll be having that information out soon, and it'll be posted everywhere that we are um, on. So I'm going to stop sharing that and come back to my screen. OK, um, and I'm going to go through questions. Please, please, please uh, be patient with me a little bit <laughs> as I go through. Um, we are seeing all of the people tell us where they're from. And a lot of these people. I I have I have met uh, Boisa and Steph Funk, uh, who actually spoke at our first summit in 2020. So I'm happy about that. Did anybody have any any questions at all? Um, somebody talks about the uh, intergenerational focus and diverse ways of accessing learning and engaging in person and online. That is something that I left out, and I apologize about uh, for it. We have two large senior citizen communities here and I have a funny story to tell. I always have stories. Uh, it's what makes it's what makes our community so amazing. Um, we uh, wanted to grow uh, collards for the community because that's what they asked for. And uh, one day I was getting up uh, from bed to go to use the restroom and, and saw some activity like 11 o'clock at night and saw activity and I was inquisitive. There were lights shining, um, police out there. Turns out 
that some senior citizens from one of the buildings came over, they drove their car over, and they had garbage bags for harvesting collards by flag. So we went out um, and introduced, scared them out of their skin, but introduced ourselves. And that was a point in time where we could connect with them and let them know um, just how the, the farm worked and that we would want to see them over and volunteering. And some of the best community connections that way, coming through and, and helping themselves to the farm, um, that they now feel ownership farm and the space, and they are some of our greatest, greatest ambassadors. And I love it so much. Uh, that's about it for, for my session. Um, I'm very, very grateful for all of you who have joined. Uh, if you want more about what and the work that we do, I chatted up in, in Instagram, on Instagram and Twitter, and we chatted up in Facebook. Uh, you will see me and my cornies all the time. Um, but contact me by email and more with you and, you know, learn all of the joining the sessions this far. Any more questions? And I'm going to cry at this, this act of, it's amazing. I cry, I cry easily. So if you see me crying somewhere, don't mind me at all. Well, that's it for me, you all. Uh, thank you. And I'm hoping that you uh, enjoy the rest of today's sessions. And we will see you later. And as I sign off with everything, keep sewing and growing. Much love.